All right. Welcome everyone um, to uh, my workshop on equipment for professional song lighting. Um, I'm Sheldon Moe, and tonight I'm basically going to be going through some of my um, equipment that I found has uh, this particular collection that I've put together over the past decade that I think pretty much prepares me for any sort of circumstance, anything that, uh, any place or any, any circumstance that I'm going into. Um, I'm going to uh, tell you about um, some of the things that uh, I have discovered in terms of best practices. Uh, and I'm going to be telling you a few things about um, non-specific um, equipment related things. But then I want to actually go through and show you some of my things and get through as much of it as we can in about the next half hour or so. So I do want to let you know that um, there are two links in the description. The first link is to a packing list, uh, something I'm going to be referencing a little bit later. And the second link is um, I wrote a three-part blog. I realized I wasn't going to be able to get through quite as much uh, material as I wanted to in this 30 minutes. I'm going to run and, and get through as much of it as I can. But um, the blog is really comprehensive. It is going to go into a lot more detail. And I've put all sorts of links to product pages <clears throat> um, and to websites. So you really um, shouldn't need to take notes for this next half hour. Uh, I really spent uh, a lot of time putting that thing together. So uh, please use it. Um, please also comment. Hello, everybody. Good to see you. Um, I want to send a huge shout out to the Song Leader Bootcamp community, and I'm psyched to be doing this uh, skill series video, video with you. Um, so who am I? In case we don't know each other, my name is Sheldon Lowe. I live in New York City, and I have been song leading for the better part of the last two decades. Um, I also have put out uh, five or six albums <laughs> uh, over the past uh, little more than a decade um, in Jewish rock music. And um, so I think that sort of gives me a lot of um, a lot of experience to work with, and I'm going to try and impart some of that for you. Just a few caveats before I really begin. Um, this collection of gear is what I bring with me for song leading specific gigs, not performance. So if you are interested in a performance related gear. Uh, webinar. I'd be happy to, you know, potentially do that in the future. But I do want to be specific that this is about song leading tonight. <laughs> this is also my particular gear list. Um, it's all about my considerations. For example, I live in New York City. I do not own a car. Um, I pound the pavement a lot with my own two feet. So a lot of times I'm just carrying uh, stuff with me. So for example, size and weight is is carries a lot more weight for me than, than maybe with you if you have a car and do most of your things within driving distance. Um, and um, I also want to be clear that gear is not a substitute for talent. Um, you are not going to be able to just take this list of things, buy it, plug it in, and automatically be a professional song leader. I want you to think of this as another set of tools that can help open up other opportunities for you, other ways that you can enhance your song leading or your, your gigs, but it is certainly not a substitute. And in fact, um, learning how to use the stuff and learning how to use it properly takes time and practice, and um, at first it can actually get in your way. There's a whole section in part one of uh, the blog that I'm referencing that's, um, that's linked here, and um, that, uh, that first section, I go into a little bit about purchasing equipment. Um, I, I purposely didn't put any prices or anything, but I have created links to product pages. And um, I just want to say, almost anywhere on an, almost any product, you can negotiate price. So um, please do that. I do want to point out, um, you should always be safe, but there are, um, are some neat new tools that you may not know about. You may know about, for example, Craigslist or eBay, but maybe you don't know about Reverb.com, which is kind of like an eBay specifically for music equipment. You may not know about LetGo, which is kind of like Craigslist, except it's app-based and um, it's tied to your social profile, so there's a little bit more accountability, and the interface is obviously a lot easier. Um, and Sparkplug is a really cool other website. Again, all these are linked in the blog. Um, Spark a peer-to-peer -peer music gear rental website. So um, check that out, especially if you want to potentially try out some of this gear before you uh, make a purchase. Uh, a couple other things. When you do get gear, 
make sure you get some labels and label it with your name and your contact number. That's a great way to save a lot of money. Um, and my two biggest tips, um, the first one is use a packing list. This is the best way to ensure that you don't leave anything at home and get to your gig and find that it's missing. It's a great way to make sure that you don't pack up um, at the venue and come home and realize either then when you get home or maybe even at your next gig that you left something behind and you have no idea where it is. So um, you can download that in the link in the description. Uh, it's a Word doc so that you can make it your own. Um, I will just say, as I mentioned in my blog, there are other um, professions that use checklists. There are um, doctors and hospitals and flight ground crews. So um, that's the way to be really airtight. Um, the second thing, um, and I hurt my back, so I can't unfortunately lift this bag, but um, I think this is a great tip. I basically have two sets of most of the things that are worth having two sets of, and I keep them packed all the time. So for example, uh, I have a dot kit that I keep permanently packed with all my toiletries. I save a tremendous amount of time by not having to pack that every single time with, and make sure that I remembered my toothpaste and my, you know, my toothbrush and blah, 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 blah. So it just stays packed all the time. Um, same thing goes for with gear. So when I'm packing my stuff, when I'm leaving, everything is packed. And if I don't need something, I physically remove it and I leave it in a neat little pile. And that's just a, a great way. Um, I feel like if the default is packed, there's less of a chance that I'm going to leave it at home. Um, and again, it saves me a tremendous amount of time because then I just get home and I just put everything that I left behind back in my suitcase. And um, it saves just thousands and thousands of minutes. So definitely um, check that out. Okay, let's get into some of the gear. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for about the next 20 uh, to 25 minutes right now. And um, I'm going to try and give like a two or three minute heads up beforehand because I know there's a bit of a delay. And... Um, at that point, you can start typing maybe any questions that you have, and uh, that way I can see them pop up here, and uh, and they'll be ready to go for, for a quick little Q&A towards the end. So I know this is super boring, but uh, it's usually an afterthought. You want to hear about what mics I use and, and wireless and stuff like that. But actually, what I want to talk about first is cases. Um, you are not, remember, this is equipment for professional songwriting. There's nothing that makes you look less professional than um, showing up and having just gear that's been smashed to bits because you didn't have it in the proper case. The first thing is obviously your guitar. So for those of you who fly, um, I know a lot of people prefer to um, put their things up in the overhead bin, for example, or the coat closet when you're flying. Uh, I bought this about 10 years ago. It was an expensive investment, but I have never had to, uh, to, to spend any more money. I've never had a single problem with it or with my guitar. Um, this is a Calton case. It is a custom fiberglass case. Um, it is heavy duty. Uh, the new ones come with a microchip. This one um, is a little bit older, so it just has a serial number. But this thing is, I mean, the airlines toss it around and, and nothing can really happen to it. Yes, Calton. So uh, there are other models out there. I think some that may be slightly lighter um, than these, but um, I can personally attest to this. I trust it. I, I I happily hand it over to the TSA and I forget about it until I need to um, to have it again. The one thing I want to mention about the Calton case um, is that the one vulnerability it kind of has is the buckles. Um, I'm not sure if they can really be replaced at all. Maybe if you send it in, they can move it down a little bit, but they can get broken. So if you are going to get a case like this, I highly recommend that you get a bag to cover it. Um, this bag is again, I've only purchased this once. I think it was about 200 or 150 bucks when I bought it. Um, it goes over, it provides some more thermal protection and more waterproofing, which is great because sometimes your baggage has to sit in the rain for a little bit. This case is waterproof, but you know, it's always nice to, to be double proof. Anyway, so replacing a $200 bag is much cheaper than a thousand dollar case. And again, I've never had to do either. Um, I have had to just put, you can see like a, taking it to some shoe stores and they've like patched it up and I've had to have the zipper kind of fixed um, in, a, in a couple of the places around New York. I don't know if you have any of those uh, like shoe repair stores near you, but uh, that's a really important purchase. The other thing that it, that it has is it has this giant pocket here. So it's great for um, packing unbreakable stuff, tennis shoes, uh, cables, stuff like that. So definitely get a bag. This one is called the Small Dog. Um, I think they might've been purchased by Colorado Case Company, but 
uh, they, I think they've gone out of business or something. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, but again, links to all this stuff on the blog. Um, the other thing I'll say about the Calton case is it is a beast. They are really heavy. Yes, Rick. <laughs> I know you know. So um, I, as I said, I'm pounding the pavement in New York quite a bit. Um, I'm not carrying this anywhere. I don't have to, basically. So I have this other, um, what's called a Taylor hard bag. They make, let's see if I can get this into the shot a little bit more. Angle this down. Um, they make a soft version of this as well. Um, this one has some sort of PVC um, you know, protection in the sides. You can see I can squish it, so it's not really a hard case, but um, I can throw this thing on my back and uh, I can go through the tiny little turnstiles in New York City subway, and if it you know, bumps into the turnstile or, or, or something like that, I'm not worried at all, never had a problem. Just really important, um, this thing doesn't provide much thermal or wetness or, um, uh, or, or humidity protection, so I definitely recommend, especially in hot summers, cold winters, as soon as you get home, get your guitar, put it in a hard case with the humidifier and everything like that. So um, there are cheaper versions of this too. Hadar uses one, my wife uses one. Um, I prefer this one because it's balanced really well. Hers, um, I literally have to do a uh, Monty Python's Ministry of Silly Walk when I get like on and off the subway. Um, otherwise I literally get stuck on the top subway door or sometimes literally going up the steps in the subway because it sits so high on my back and when I take it off, I'm, it leans so far back and I'm like smacking New Yorkers with it. So, um, so that's that. Um, some of the things I'm going to be showing you now uh, do come with their own cases. So um, I just want to show you one other thing before I get into some of like the hardware hardware. Um, this is a small but I think pretty pretty uh, important thing. Uh, this is my strap for my guitar. Um, what you see right here on the end is a strap lock. This one's made by Schaller. There's a few different brands that make them. Um, if you have ever seen a guitar hit the deck, uh, it's horrible. It breaks your heart every single time. Um, Sometimes people just pick up the guitar only by the strap, and of course you all know to never just do that. And I still, even with these strap locks, wouldn't recommend it. But I, I do think this is a really good protection for you um, in case things happen. Sometimes you lift your hands like I did on my very first gig ever, and um, and my guitar fell off both ends of the strap, and I, you know, like this, which basically um, made me lose any sort of cool factor that I was you know, hoping to have. <laughs> um, Okay, so let's get to the fun stuff now. This is uh, basically starting at part three of the blog that, um, that I linked to, because uh, I think people are really interested in this stuff, and, and I'm just gonna get through as much as I can in the next you know, 12 or so minutes. This is my um, over-ear cheek mic. It's made by Countryman. It's called an E6. This is one of the um, products I'm gonna be talking about tonight that does come with its own carrying case, which is really nice. Um, this exact model is the E6DW6T2SL. Don't worry, it's in that blog. Um, I just wanna point out the different features and different considerations if you are considering getting an over-ear mic, something like this that you can plug in to, your, um, to a wireless system, which is how I use it. So E6, um, refers to the stiffness of this uh, microphone part right here. There are a couple more flexible options. I highly recommend whatever microphone you buy, get one that is the stiffest. Um, the the, the um, more flexible ones can fall off your ear from, from just opening your jaw, which is what you do when you sing. So <laughs> yes, the mechanical engineer in me is coming up. So it goes over your mouth like this. Um, this is a, an expensive and um, high quality mic, so I don't necessarily recommend it for a, um, let's say a camp, someplace where it's gonna get really beat up. It's, it's meant to be small, it's meant to be sort of innocuous, and therefore it's a little more fragile. Uh, so if the voice, if your voice merits a quality mic such as this, um, then I would recommend it, and if you can make sure that you can be careful with it, um, and it's not gonna be shared around uh, you know, but then I would recommend this mic very much. So get the one that's stiff up here. D stands for directional. A lot of my um, song leading and, and, and um, 
service leading, I do from in front of speakers. And that's where you run into trouble with feedback because you have a microphone pointed at a speaker and it gets louder and louder. It's, it's a feedback loop. So the directional in theory has a, a thinner um, pickup pattern. And um, so that's why I chose that. Um, and I've, I've had a lot of success with it. W6 refers to the sensitivity of the mic. And um, this one is middle so that I can use it when I'm speaking. I can sing loud into it as well. Um, T refers to the color, comes in a few colors to make it you know, match your skin tone. Um, two refers to the size of the cable. It comes in a two millimeter and a one millimeter. This is the two millimeter. I've used the one millimeter and have not had a problem with it, but just psychologically when I purchased this one, I just went with two. Um, and then this is the most important part. SL stands for this connector. Um, the cables uh, come in different um, connector types because every single brand of wireless system has its own proprietary connector at the end. This one is for sure. So um, you can, in the future, if you want to switch, you can purchase a new cable. Um, you can see the cable just um, pops off of the mic right there, but might as well just get the right one the first time. Okay. So uh, one other thing I want to tell you about using this mic that I think is, is, is worthwhile is every time I use this, um, it's kind of like uh, when you're using your earbuds for your phone. You know, I'm walking down the street and swinging my arms, and I'll accidentally hit this thing, and it'll yank down, and I might step on the mic or something like that. So um, every time I use it, I know it's a little bit funny, but I snake it down my shirt like this. And um, if I'm you know, wearing a shirt that's uh, tucked in or buttoned down, I just have it come out the lowest button uh, on my shirt, and then um, my guitar is hiding it anyway, so it's, it's really no big deal. But this eliminates or reduces at least the possibility of getting stuck on anything or, um, or, or yanking it out or anything like that. So um, that is the Countryman mic. So let's go on to the wireless system that I use. Um, I use two of these Shure PGXDs. Um, I use these because, again, size and weight is really important to me because I'm carrying everything on my back. Um, these are the smallest, lightest units that Shure makes. They're the um, entry level digital model. Um, and so they are lacking in a lot of features, to be honest. Um, and uh, with the exception of really um, densely populated areas, there, there are two in particular where I've had problems, which is um, in uh, a spot in New York and a spot in DC, both of which are near um, hospitals. So there's a lot of FM radio interference. Um, I'm, I'm gonna talk about how these work. I'm gonna show you very specifically in a second, but I, I just wanna mention two things that are really important. Number one is um, there's a tool that actually Sure itself uh, has on their website where you can put in uh, the zip code of where you um, do most of your song leading and it will tell you which frequency range um, is best for that area, what, which is most available. Um, it, it, these units use FM frequencies just like on the radio. And so if you've ever been in a car where you've got competing radio stations, you know, there's a similar thing. The stronger signal is going to win. So um, these come in different uh, bands of the frequency spectrum. So you can buy usually this unit that, that it's in this range, or you can buy this unit that's in the same exact unit, but it's in a different range that's uh, better for your particular area. So make sure you check into that. The other thing that you really need to be careful is the FCC occasionally auctions off sections of the frequency range like they just did. So some of these, if they are in that range, are immediately, well not immediately, but as soon as the, um, the law goes into effect, they, they become um, illegal to use. So be very careful, especially if you're on the used market, that you're buying one that's um, that's you're going to be able to use for, for a long time. Okay, well, let's see. So um, I've got my other one plugged in over here already. There's not, not even an on-off switch on this. You literally just um, take the power connector and you plug it in. Okay, and then wherever you are, what you do is there's only two buttons on the front, which are a little hard to see, I admit. But one of them is this channel button, and you hit it, and it's going to automatically search for the most available channel, the one that has the least interference. It found it. As soon as it finds it, what you're going to do is you're going to take, this is the receiver in my left hand. I don't know if it's flipped 
for you or not, this, this big thing that says 6.4, that's the receiver. This is the transmitter that you keep on your, um, on your body. So you just flick it on just by holding down the button on the top and you see that light goes on. You open up the panel, sorry, only two hands here. I'll explain why I use two in just a second, Matt. Um, well, one is for my guitar and one is for my vocals. There's a little sensor right on there that says sync. And all you do is you face, have them face one another like this, and then you push the other button, which is sync, and it'll automatically sync up. And now, um, you know, it's not plugged in, so you're not gonna be able to hear it, but if I just touch the tip, I don't think it's, I don't think it's synced, because I'm trying to do this with two hands. Here, okay, there we go. Um, you'll know it's working because it says ready right there. And then you'll notice that when I just touch the tip, um, that light is lighting up to show that it's receiving some signal. Sorry, I'll back it up a little bit. Um, that's literally how easy it is to connect these and have them um, operate. Um, so uh, just a couple more uh, things to say about this. Um, as I mentioned, it's their entry level digital. Um, so in high uh, interference areas and places that are really densely populated or, or just have a lot of FM frequencies, um, they, can, they can experience dropouts and it can um, make it not really um, uh, possible to use these professionally. So if you're in a freestanding building, I, I mean, literally in my 10, well, I've been using these units for about five years. Um, in the past five years, there are two locations I've experienced where I've had a problem here. There are more expensive units that will automatically frequency hop. So you don't have to manually hit that scan button and then sync these. Um, they'll, they'll do that automatically if they notice interference and there'll be no sound dropout. Um, I, I've managed to get by fine on this. Um, but I do want to let you know they come in different packages. So um, this one is the PGX D14, which means that it comes with the um, with the transmitter, it comes with the receiver, and it comes with this proprietary cable. Again, the one that has like a sure type of connector and a, a quarter inch on the other end. And you need this to plug into your guitar. Um, they also come with head worn like Madonna mics. They also come with two different types of lavalier lapel microphones. Um, so if those are better for you for one reason or another, then, um, then those are certainly an option. And, and of course, they also come with the handheld. Those are all just different packages, but they'll all be the PGXD. They'll all have this um, receiver on them. Okay, so quick little um, semi-gear related thing. A lot of these things take batteries. Um, the PGX uses AA in each of these packs. Um, I was recently told about these brand new rechargeable batteries, nickel metal hydride, um, and I decided to give them a shot. I've only been using them for six months and I don't feel like I can quite uh, endorse them just yet because I just don't, I don't think I've used them in enough situations or long enough, but uh, they're really cheap. They're like 35 bucks for 10, including a charger. I got off Amazon, I got this. Um, these are the Panasonic Analoops. Um, what's really great about these, aside from being cost-effective after like you know a couple charges, is they have a really long um, shelf life. I think they can last for like ten, no, not ten years, five years, fully charged without using them. The old style of rechargeable batteries couldn't last that long. Um, and uh, the other benefit, um, major benefit of the, uh, is the um, Aside from the cost, well, the reason I like them, the thing that really turned me on aside from the cost is that they're really environmentally friendly because you're not just throwing away batteries into a landfill. Um, these can be recharged something like a thousand times, basically. Um, and the other thing that I was going to say that's, that I, I really dig about them, they won't um, lose their charge. Oh, they don't develop a memory. Um, the old ones, uh, if you didn't completely discharge them, in every use and then recharge them fully, they would stop holding charge after a little while. So um, again, I can't like fully endorse them just yet, but um, but they've been working pretty well for me for the last six months. And uh, it means I don't have to carry like 10 batteries with me. I can just carry like six of them in the charger and that's really great. 
Um, the one caveat I want to say, which I learned sort of the hard way uh, this past weekend, is um, you could tout it as a benefit of these. These um, give a constant voltage throughout their discharge, whereas a normal alkaline will give a slightly lower voltage as, uh, as you discharge. And so these things have a little LED on the top. Um, a meter that tells you when they're about to run out of batteries. Um, and I guess that meter runs on voltage. So it turns red when it tells you like, oh, the voltage is, you know, these, these are about to run out of charge. Um, since these don't ever um, decrease voltage until basically they're dead, you get no warning <laughs> with these that they're about to, uh, to discharge. So um, just charge before you use them if you want to try and go that route. So um, this is like the two or three minute warning um, if you've got any questions, definitely let me know. Uh, I want to talk about one other um, thing that I think is really um, important. This is called um, a DI box, a direct injection box, uh, um, just a DI for short. Um, if you're not going the wireless route, this is a really great purchase. I think something like this, a passive one, is like 40 bucks. I don't think Groove Tubes is around anymore, but I left a link for one that's nearly identical. Basically, quarter inch cables, guitar cables, are what are called high impedance cables. They have a lot of friction. So you need to, they can only go so far, the signal can only go so far before it degrades to a certain degree. Whereas XLR cables, microphone cables, are low impedance, low friction. So sound can travel much further without any sort of degradation in the quality. So the DI box basically just converts that high impedance signal to a low impedance signal, so you can go much further. The furthest um, you can go on a quarter inch cable is usually something like 20, 30 feet, something like that, um, which may sound like a lot, but um, your living rooms are probably larger than that, not mine because I live in New York City. But um, so basically all you do is you plug your, um, your guitar through the quarter inch cable into one of these, and then you plug your XLR mic cable on the other end and that goes into your board. This one is passive, doesn't need a battery. It also has this little ground loop, uh, ground lift switch on it. Um, if you hear a buzz, sometimes just flicking the switch can help because you have something called a ground loop of the electricity going through the, uh, through the ground. Um, I, I don't use this one anymore because, um, again, space being a consideration. I started using this Fishman R Spectrum DI and it is both a mute tuner and a DI and a preamp and a three band EQ and a compressor. And it's also got, um, you know, a phase uh, switch, uh, anti-feedback, and it's got some modeling, which I haven't really used to be honest, but um, it just opens up certain possibilities um, for me. So um, I can keep going, but are there any questions before I do? Um, I don't see anything else popping up, so I'm going to keep talking until I do. I've I got about two more minutes. Um, okay, equipment for professional song leading. Okay, I would definitely recommend you get a stand like this one. I've used the Hamilton stands. Um, I like this one because it fits into my roller board. My roller board is 22 and a half inches, and I found that that is the limit on most airplanes around... Uh, around the country. Um, I, I like this one because it's relatively light. It fits in there. And just a couple other things about it that uh, that I really like. It's a neck support up here, and it basically hangs on the neck support. Um, this one has a um, has these fold-outs. I actually prefer not to have these. This is not my, my one that I normally use. I like the one that just sit like this because then they're hanging entirely on the neck, um, and they're just much easier to get on and off. Um, the one thing I will say about these stands is um, if someone else is trying to help you and they pick it up and they try to jam the legs closed or open, they have a, a decent chance of breaking this little lock right here. So just be a little bit careful on that. Um, I've had some people do that to me, and so I've had to buy more. Okay, a couple questions. Anyone ever use vocal pedals or effect? Um, so I have tried that. Uh, I have a harmonizer pedal. I know Todd Herzog does that a lot. Um, I think it's a great idea. It's not something that I've gotten to spend a lot of time with just yet. The one trouble is um, they're not, or the one I use, I use the TC Helicon version. Uh, you have to plug your guitar in and then 
in order for it to get the right interval, it needs to sort of know what key you're in. Uh, and so you strum your guitar and it sort of reads what key you're in and can usually get it right, but occasionally gets it wrong. <laughs> when it gets it wrong, it's, you know, it's, it's not great. So you gotta really be careful about when you use it and on which songs and in which keys. Um, so yeah, we could talk about that later. I also wanna just mention, I will stay on for a little bit if you guys have questions and, and we can text back and forth. Please definitely check out the blog and leave comments there. I'd like for that to be a little bit of like a water fountain where if you've got ideas or if I said something wrong here or uh, you know any sort of feedback or other questions, please make sure to check that out. Um, so Jason, are there CVRs you're bringing generally being plugged into house systems? Uh, generally, yes, I find that to be the easiest thing. Um, usually I'm using them in sanctuaries. So obviously there's a house uh, PA. Um, occasionally I will use these. Um, when I'm doing young children's concerts, I like to jump around the stage quite a bit. I don't like to be locked into a microphone on a stand. So, um, so, um, so then in that case, they're plugged in, not necessarily like a house system, but they're, they're into whatever PA has been rented. Um, or if I'm bringing my own PA. I um, hope that answered your question. I'm happy to talk about that later. Um, I think I'm out of time. I just want to send another shout out to the Sommelier Bootcamp community and send a huge thanks. I really um, I'm very, very honored that you all uh, spent this time with me right now. And I am um, very honored to be a part of this community. And I really appreciate this um, sort of collective. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Again, please check out the links. Please give me um, feedback, uh, share it with the group so that we can all learn and benefit from this. Um, and um, hope you found it useful. Thanks for being a part of the Equipment for Professional Song Leading um, Skill Series as part of SLBC. I will see you all on the road soon. Thanks so much.